Hi, how are you? It's Travis here, and welcome back to our adventures in Azeroth. Last episode, we assassinated Maltorius. We took some plans that he stole, and we also slayed some incendosaurs. Today, we are going to continue our journey here in the Searing Gorge. And I think today we might hit level 54, so I'm looking forward to that. Should hit it. Only two bars away. And we're going to start a quest chain here with Can I help you? Elarok Windblade. I supply only the fun. Vengeance space. shall be mine, divine retribution. Hear my tale, adventurer. Listen to Velarok Windblade tell his story. Greetings. Tell me what drives this vengeance. My father was slain by the filth that inhabits the cauldron. My pleas for assistance to the Stormwind Magistrate fell off of deaf ears. Nay, they want not to admit that this part of the world even exists, let alone send their precious military in to administer justice. I seek vengeance, Blood Elf, plain and simple. Is there a more passionate cause in this world? Continue, please. As you can see, I am but one man with a lumbering oaf of a squire. The might of the Dark Iron Dwarves and the beasts held in the grip of Ragnaros would surely overwhelm me alone. But I have the utmost confidence that such a brave and ambitious adventurer such as you would have no problem handling the denizens of the cauldron. Should you choose to assist me, I shall reward you with riches and wealth beyond your wildest dreams. Let me confer with my colleagues. Be careful. You need something? Have you heard enough? Are you prepared to act? The flawless flame. You have made the right decision, Travadin. We must strike where we will do the most damage, the four sentry towers. With the four sentry towers in flames, we can initiate an offensive before they have time to react. You will need the proper tool to set the towers ablaze. To make the tool requires some materials. Bring me four hearts of flame and four golem oil, and I shall craft a torch of flawless flame. The golems and elementals in these lands should be your first target. Okay. Have a good one. Let's go do that. And it's a... It's an interesting story. That seems to be uh, the trend with the Alliance. They never want to, you know, send their military to, to deal with threats outside of uh, Elwyn, Forest, and Stormwind. They wouldn't even send their military out to Westfall. To help that area and same with uh duskwood as well you actually have to go there yourself and help out i wonder why they do that i guess they're having a rough time all right so we need to look for Elementals. Most of them are down here. While we do that, we will try to get our herbalism up as well. And it seems like Blizzard has made another change to Wrath of Lich King. They are not adding a quest helper to Wrath of Lich King Classic. So it will most likely be the way it is now. There won't be any like quest helping at all. Because supposedly that came in during the end of Wrath of Lich King. And they know that, yeah, there's add-ons that, you know, do that, like Questy. I actually use it sometimes. To... Well, I use it most of the time. If I'm ever leveling on my main, I usually just use Questy. Why not? But, uh, I think there's a little more immersion when you don't use it. It does, you know, clutter you, your UI, like, over here. And stuff, like, pops up on your screen that's, like, kind of unnecessary. So I am happy that they are uh, removing it from the game. But they are adding features, you know, that help people, you know, group up together. So I guess there's that. It's interesting. Some interesting changes, that's for sure. There's a herb over here that we're going to go pick up.
Like, I could use Questy for these Let's Plays. And, like, I have no, like, the reason why I don't use it, I don't know if I've ever announced this, but I don't use it because I, just because I think it clutters up the screen. Try to make the UI, like, not as cluttered as possible. We even shrunk this part of the UI. Sometimes these, uh, I think this part kind of gets in the way, but I think it's good to have. I keep it up mostly because, you know, it gives information like what I'm picking up, you know, my herbalism levels. I try to stay away from this, the spam, but this is unnecessary, but I think this, you know, is good to have up because it does like, you know, tells you what's going on when I'm picking up, what I'm leveling up as, or when I level up, how much stats I get. It's good for me, too, because it helps out with, you know, quest items. And also, you know, VOEs that drop. You can always just, like, go over here, click on it. See how much stats you got on it. Okay, so we got two here. Probably finish this quest pretty quick. Drop rate's pretty damn good. We're already halfway done. But I am getting beat up in this area on my uh, shaman. Not doing too well. I kind of wish my paladin was on that server. I'd probably do much better, I think. That's for sure. I just get rocked. Like, I was fighting this rogue. And uh, he was just racking me. You just stealth, open up, ambush, ambush, dead. I'll be, I'd be, be like ambush, ambush, and I'd be like 10% health. But like, my only chance was to open up on him before he, uh, you know, man, like, or stealths. And I tried that, and I still died. Because he just, he would vanish, you know? And then he'd get his opener again. Alright, so we're good with the Hearts of Flame. I think we just need to get the Golem Oil now. I wonder if these War Golems drop them. I don't know if it said that. A lot of great quests in our... our quest log here. The Golems and Elementals in these lands should be your first target. These are the War Golems here. Maybe they do drop it. We'll see. I'll keep an eye on the, uh, the other... Elementals. I think the War Golems might not drop it. I haven't... I did this recently on the Shaman, but I forgot. Also, the gear on my Paladin is just, like, so much better than my Shaman. I think we have a, an epic two-hander. Ruin of the Guard Captain, like two two pretty solid trinkets and decent amount of plate. So Yeah, I would say my paladin is more geared than the shaman. And it looks like we get golem oil for these guys, so keep fighting these these four golems. Also, it looks like uh, tailoring is going to be a pretty popular profession. It's underrated. Especially for melee classes. And the reason is, is because of uh, the enchant that you're able to get on your Brack piece from being a tailor. Supposedly, it's, you know, comparable to, uh, you know, what you get with jewel crafting. But the cool thing about the tailoring piece is when it procs, like when the the enchant procs, you uh, have a chance to, you know, line it up with your offensive cooldowns as a DPS. And 
you, you can pump out a lot of damage. And I actually just leveled up JC. I'm JC Engineering. Which is jewel, JC means jewel crafting, if you don't know. And I might have to, uh, to uh, switch to tailoring. I might have to get rid of jewel crafting. I'm going to see at the beginning of the expansion how, how much better it is than, than JC. If I notice that it like it's like substantially better if you, you know, time it right with your cooldowns, then I may switch, which is kind of crap because I just, I wasted like a solid, you know, 2k gold what can I do leveling up JC, but we'll see. It's also kind of fun. I don't know if you guys ever rated you know, like that, where you're trying to, like, line up your cooldowns. It's kind of fun doing that stuff. Hold on, Travenant, we're almost ready. To hold the Fall of Flame, we will need a shaft and casing. You must first find a suitable shaft. The Dark Iron Taskmasters and Slavers of the Cauldron use weapons of enchanted thorium, an extremely sturdy alloy. If you bring me either thorium-plated daggers, I can break the alloy down and reforge a shaft. See you later. Alright, so I guess we will uh, lay some more of these dwarves here. Need some thorium. Yeah, it is it is fun, but it can be annoying too, because it makes the it makes DPSing like I guess a little bit more challenging because you have to pay attention to to uh, a proc. And a proc is like a buff that comes on you at like a, at a random moment. And the cool thing is, is if you can line up all that stuff together, you do insane damage. And that's not including just your buffs, but like, you know, external buffs as well. Like, you know, tricks of the trade or... Or, um... You know, lust from a shaman. Oh, there we go. We got Thorium Dagger. Nice. I really can't wait for Wrath Raiding. Especially once Eldar uh, comes out. I, I enjoy Nax as well. Nax is a cool raid, especially if you're doing it, you know, clean. What I mean by clean is, like, you know, not a... Pretty much no wipes. Obviously, wiping sucks. Everybody hates wiping in the run back, but it's a part of raiding. But when you have a clean run, it really feels good, especially Nax Ramus, because it's such a big raid. You're fighting over uh, over ten bosses. I think there's like close to fifteen. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, World of Warcraft's kind of in, like, a lull period right now. I wish I got the beta. It would have been cool to, like, try things out on the beta. And test out DKs. There we go. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. Sorry. Oh, man. Had to let it go. Couldn't hold it in. Okay, so we got three there, and we leveled up. Sneezed once we leveled up. Let's check out Red here. Red seems to be pretty good. I wonder if I took anything else from the other trees. I don't know what I would take from another tree. The armor bonus from Devotion or Damaging melee and range attacks have a 10% chance to increase your block now. Increase your total strength by 2%. Yeah, okay, that's clearly... Clearly the one we will take. Got some taskmasters here. I wonder if this guy will chase me all the way over here. It's gotta leave me alone soon. One thing I can't wait for in Wrath of the Lich King is uh, getting Killing Spree as a combat rogue. In TBC, like, rogues have pretty bad, uh, 
AoE. Like, you're really waiting for Blade Flurry to come off cooldown. So, it's like every two minutes you get, like, a, a Blade Flurry. Kind of sucks. While, like, other classes are, like, doing consistent AoE the whole raid. You gotta wait every two minutes. But in Wrath, you got Blade Flurry and the Killing Spree, so... You can really pump out the, the AoE. Plus, you also have Fan of Knives. I haven't done Fan of Knives in so long. I used to spam that ability. Like crazy. Also, ability that's that's also pretty good on rogues. It's called uh, Tricks of the Trade. And what it does is it gives uh, gives the person you're putting it putting it on 15% extra damage. And all of the damage you do generates threat for them. So it's great to put on a tank. So say a tank wants to pull, like, say a tank's pulling this guy. I could walk up and pull, like, this guy and this guy. Use tricks of the trade on him. Start spamming, like, AoE abilities like Pan and Ives. And these two mobs will just go on the tank. Which is awesome. It's great for tanks. I want to uh, pull more stuff in the raid. You can get like huge pulls for a tank, which is really good. Rogues are just, I don't know, I just think they're just a better class in Wrath. Like, people do say, like, in TBC, rogues are, like, awesome. And it's mostly because of Warglaives. But. I think they're a lot more fun in, in Wrath of Lich King. And that's why I'm maining one. And also because it was my first class that I ever played. I, I started playing in Wrath, so... A little bit of nostalgia there. So undecided about the alt that I want to play. It's either going to be my my druid, which is flag carrier, or or Travadin. Thinking about playing Travadin. Paladins are pretty damn good. I just don't know if I want to uh, play a prop paladin or a holy paladin, or, or either play a resto druid. Looks like we may have to go down into the cauldron if we want to find more of these dwarves. So here's some. Oh yeah, we already got that grim sled out of We gotta make sure we head down there. Before we leave this spot. It's a pretty easy quest. What's going on? Oh wow, we had a little bit of lag there. Ooh, double proc. Let's have a drink here. Supposedly the Steam Smiths have these. I think one dropped one earlier. We are wrecking these mobs. Much higher level. I think we're ready to uh, to go to a tougher zone, that's for sure. Especially at level 54. Next spot we'll be going to is on Coral Crater. That'll be fun. 
try to fight some of the T-Rexes there. See how we do. It's a lot of fun at the beginning of Classic fighting against or, or trying to uh, gank people. We were trying to farm the Devil Sore Leather. There was this uh, group called the Devil Sore uh, Mafia. And what they would do is they would uh, collaborate with uh, the Horde and the Alliance. Like if one side was Horde, they would collaborate with the Alliance. And uh, if somebody was like out there farming, you know, devil swords, which are these giant T-Rexes that roam on Girl Crater. And when you skin them, you get devil sword leather, which makes us the devil sword set, which is pretty damn popular at the beginning of Classic. Which is why uh, people pay a lot of gold for the leather. So it creates uh, pretty high demand for slaying these, these giant T-Rexes. And so, say you're a horde player, and uh, another horde player in the mafia sees you farming these giant rat, like t giant uh, T Rexes, trying to get the Devil Sword leather, leather for like a set that you want. They will tell uh, an alliance player to come and gank you, so they can, you know, get the Devil Sword for themselves, just so they can sell it or use it for themselves. Most of the time, the mafias are, are trying to sell it. It's kind of funny. And I think they maybe, they uh, they have like times. So probably the, the horde will have it for 12 hours and then they'll allow the alliance to have it for 12 hours. And then sometimes two mafias get, get created and then you'll have like a war between, you know, two, like a, a horde versus alliance on both, like the, the, pretty much like the horde versus the horde and the Alliance versus the Alliance, but the Horde deals with the Alliance on one side and the Alliance deals with the Horde on the other side. It's kind of confusing, but it's interesting. That's what I liked about Classic, was stuff like that, even though it is a little bit toxic. You know, the world was, uh, was important. Eight, Travenant. I need eight. You're an exceptional laborer, Travenant. Have you ever considered a change of vocation? Perhaps a detective, junk collector? Oh, I know. One of those silly gnomes that crawls around across the beaches of Azeroth with their metal detecting contraptions, looking for lost treasure. Yes, that would be an ideal position for you. <laughs> Just chirping us right now. All right, so there we go, guys. For the Alliance. We did a good chunk of, uh, of this, these quests for now. And I think next episode we will uh, continue this quest chain. We'll probably finish it. But yeah, that is going to be the end of today's episode. As always, thanks for watching. Keep your heads up. Later.